Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. China has issued a warning to many countries, prohibiting the sale of rare earth and other raw materials to the United States, sending a clear signal. This time it is China's turn to fight back, and it has used the sanctions that the United States favorites to inform the world that it is not allowed to cooperate with the United States. Companies in more than 20 countries including South Korea, Japan, Germany, and Brazil have recently received an ultimatum from the Chinese Ministry of Commerce. Whoever dares to sell products containing Chinese rare earths to American military enterprises, don't even think about doing business with China. This move directly made the U.S. military giants anxious, and even the Pentagon admitted that the F-35 production line may not last more than three months. China's counterattack this time is not a temporary idea. Starting from the announcement of export controls on seven types of heavy rare earths on April 4, the script of this rare earth war has been written long ago. The United States thought that it could scare China by imposing a 145% tariff, but China turned around and launched a combination of source supply cut plus technology blockade. Now US military enterprises are in a state of emergency, Tesla's robot production line has stopped working, and even the permanent magnet materials used in nuclear submarines are out of stock. This scene is more exciting than when China imposed a rare earth embargo on Japan in 2010. The scene that Japanese companies begged China to ship goods back and is now the turn of the United States. The United States uses 200 tons of rare earth materials to build an F-35 fighter and nuclear submarines have to swallow nearly 10,000 tons. Sounds exaggerated. But this is the reality. Rare earths are like the vitamins of modern industry. Mobile phones, missiles, and MRI machines will be paralyzed without them. China holds 92% of the world's rare earth processing capacity and 99% of heavy rare earth purification technology. To put it bluntly, Every gram of dysprosium and terbium used by American military enterprises has to look at China's face. What's even more amazing is China's full industrial chain advantage. From the mines in Longnan, Jiangxi to the magnet factories in Ganju, China can turn rare earths from stones into permanent magnets in missile guidance systems, while MP Materials, the only rare earth mine in the United States, had to ship 80% of its all to China for processing last year. This is like Americans growing wheat, but all the flour milling machines are in China's hands, now China has cut off your flour milling machines, so no matter how much wheat you grow, you can only watch helplessly. The Trump administration has not thought about getting rid of dependents. It started spending money on rare earth independence, 15 years ago. What is the result? The Mountain Pass mine in California was restarted three times, and each time it was blocked by environmental regulations. The heavy rare earth separation plant built in Texas was tossed for five years, and finally found that the key technology still had to be bought from China. The most ironic thing, is that the US Department of Defense spent $439 million on the Rare Earth Supply Chain Plan, and only found out after the money was spent that it would take 29 years to build a decent refinery. How could US military enterprises wait? Now the inventory of US military enterprises is only enough to last for two to three months. The Pentagon is anxious to use 3D printing technology to replace rare earth magnets, but it turns out that the laser head of the printer still has to use Chinese rare earth. Even worse is Tesla. Musk just boasted that Optimus Prime robot will be mass-produced, 
and then turned around and was forced to postpone it due to a lack of rare earth magnets. China's ban is not just aimed at the United States. The European Union held a meeting overnight to discuss the stockpiling plan. Japan placed its hopes on Australia's Linus Corporation, but found that the production capacity of the factory built by the other party in Malaysia was only one twentieth of that of China. South Korean companies are even worse. As soon as they received the warning letter from the Ministry of Commerce of China, Samsung's display production line was shut down because all the lanthanum oxide they used was imported from China. Anyone with a discerning eye can see that China's move this time was carefully calculated. Choosing to take action at the node when Trump just announced the increase in tariffs is not only a reciprocal countermeasure, but also a rule for global companies. If you want to do business with China, don't touch the muddy water of the US military industry. This strategy of beating you with your rules is even admitted by White House staff as playing beautifully. The United States is now in a dilemma, insist on not using Chinese rare earths. The F-35 production line will be shut down immediately, bow down and negotiate. It will have to give up the tariff stick again. What is even more embarrassing is that China did not impose a comprehensive embargo this time, but used the export license system to target precisely the rare earths you want to make washing machines and rice cookers are still supplied as usual, but there is no door for military-related products. This hurt, but not killed tactic not only made the United States grimaced in pain, but also left room for subsequent negotiations. This rare earth war taught the world a vivid lesson. True technological hegemony is not built by tariffs, but is honed in laboratories and factories for 30 years. China began to lay out the rare earth industry in 1992, and now it has finally reached the harvest season. On the other hand, the United States shouts manufacturing repatriation every day but it can't even build a decent refinery, which can only show that the short-sightedness of capitalism has not been cured. Now global companies are repositioning themselves, should they follow the United States to drink the Northwest wind, or follow China to eat meat and drink soup? I'm afraid even Europeans know how to choose this multiple-choice question. After all, when China links rare earth control with market access for the Belt and Road Initiative, no company will go against money. As for Trump, if he still holds on to the fantasy that adding tariffs will win, he is advised to take a look at the missiles in the Pentagon's arsenal that are waiting for rare earths to extend their lives, if he drags on, even the bargaining chips will rust.